Barack Obama's longtime pastor came out swinging today during a dress before the National Press Corps in Washington. Reverend Jeremiah Wright called the mounting criticism of his sermons an attack on the black church. Black preaching is different from European and European-American preaching. It is not deficient. It is just different. It is not bombastic. It is not controversial. It's different. The black church's role in the fight for equality and justice from the 1700s up until 2008 has always had as its core the non-negotiable doctrine of reconciliation. Reconciliation means we embrace our individual rich histories, all of them. We retain who we are as persons of different cultures while acknowledging that those of other cultures are not superior or inferior to us. They are just different from us. We root out any teaching of superiority, inferiority, hatred, or prejudice. Wright says he hopes the controversy will lead to an open and honest dialogue about race in America. Solon Simmons is a professor of sociology and conflict analysis at George Mason University. He specializes in American politics and joins us now from Washington. Mr. Simmons, speak to us about what you heard the Reverend say today. What was his message? Was he only defending himself? And how conscious is he of the impact all of this is going to have on uh, the Obama campaign? Well, Dan, it's been spun I think in the media mainly as a defense of himself and it's understood that it's going to uh, it's going to hurt Obama in the long run. Almost everyone says this is bad for Obama. The Obama campaign admits it. It seems though that he's taken enough of the attack as that he can stand and he wants to fight for what he believes is uh, his, the black church. I think that it, that, it, that we ought to take him in his word on that. Um, it, it, what's interesting is how different this appears when you when you sit for the entire 40 minutes uh, as opposed to just watching what's covered uh, or, or, or in the media afterward. And, and he's quite serious and interesting, even though he's incredibly theatrical and, and volatile. And so I, I'm, I think that he's, he's taken the stand, even though I think he's clearly still supporting Obama. You can see that in the subtle message. He even make, he alludes to it here and there. He's trying to say, look, I'm independent of all of this, and I'm standing now for the church, which is in some ways bigger than the Obama candidacy, because he sees it as at, at the core of the African-American experience. So I personally, watching both in the Detroit speech and also this morning in D.C., I think that this is a, a slightly more serious person than, than we've uh, been uh, giving him credit for as of late. Now, you talked about the clips that have been airing on television. Uh, we're going to run one right now. and Maybe you can address what we hear in this clip. Sure. Here's the Reverend. Sure. And why am I speaking out now? In our community, we have something called playing the dozens. If you think I'm going to let you talk about my mama and her religious tradition and my daddy and his religious tradition and my grandma, you got another thing coming. Now, I don't know that everyone would understand exactly what that means, but, but essentially right. he is standing up for himself, his family, and what he believes in. That's, that's why he's there. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Well, he's, I think it's a metaphor for uh, defending your own under certain circumstances. You know, when I, when I watch that, you, you have to play the clips, and this guy is almost made for television. That's why we love him, <laughs> because, you know, it's, he gives us exactly, he, you know, uh, it, he gives you what you want. But I think, on the other hand, he has a serious message you have to wait for. You know, his, the soundbite he wanted us to pick up was, uh, difference is not a deficiency. If you go through and you watch, that's what he wanted us to, to, to mm -hmm. pick up on. And we don't, we don't really pick up on that for whatever reason. But he's trying to, by his own message, he's trying to say, look, I'm different. Don't see it as deficient. I think that's what he's trying to hammer through. And he says, if you don't get it, too bad. I'm going to keep hammering it through. And it's not good for a political campaign. And he's admitted as much on Bill Moyer's show the other day. Yeah. Now, about that. Now, now, the media, too, have been saying that a lot of what the Reverend says damages the candidate. But yeah. an awful lot of people, you know, at the grassroots level, including an awful lot of white people, have a lot of sympathy for the message because he talks about injustice and he talks right. about anger. And, and, right. and a lot of the clips do come out of context. So the net effect of this is going to be what politically? I think we don't know. Uh, you know, on the one hand, it, it's, he did for, for Barack Obama. He put him, we all, we're always fighting the last war in a sense. And if you go back to 2004, uh, uh, Howard Dean falls apart with the Dean scream. John Kerry falls apart with the swift boat. In a sense, Reverend Wright has done both of those things, are given an opportunity to Obama. Uh, on, on the one hand, it's almost a I have a dream scream that he has. It's run over and over and over in the same way. But on the other hand, he gave uh, Obama a chance to, to stand up for his liberal base in a way that John Kerry didn't. Think about why the swift boat attack worked. 
John Kerry was a war hero. True. He had three Purple Hearts. True. He also uh, protested the war, the, the Vietnam War. But he was afraid to say that. He reported for duty, and that was it. That left voters thinking, what's wrong with this guy? There's a, sub, there's a missing piece of this story, and I'm going to fill it in, and I'm going to let these other people fill it in. That must be the story. Barack Obama leaned in. He said, no, I'm going to claim this. This is my crazy uncle, and I'm gonna, I'm, my connection to the civil rights movement is real, uh, just like uh, uh, Kerry's to the Vietnam protest movement was real, but I'm going to accept it. So we don't know. That was great. We call that the speech now, right, because mm -hmm. he did that. But it, now, So are, is the sincerity factor he gained from that going to outweigh that uh, the remix that we're now seeing in the North Carolina race, the racism that's implicit in that, we don't know, and I think nobody knows. And, and you know what's been really interesting is, uh, is Obama comes along almost out of nowhere, I think, for an awful lot of people, yeah. and, and his campaign was described in the early going as being post-racial. Like, he's True. not a black man, he's not of mixed race, he's just a candidate. He's gone yeah. past that. And Reverend Wright seems to be the one, and I don't know if we call it a chain or an anchor, but he's certainly the link to race in America, and he's yeah. not going to let that go away, is he? He isn't. Well, you know, I think it clarifies what post-racial always meant. It doesn't mean get rid of race. It means move through it and have, have an opportunity for African Americans to be mainstream professional players in the civil society. And I think that's what the post-racial dream really is. And, and Reverend Wright emphasized this again and again and again. He says, look, um, I'm different. I'm not going to change. If you, if you watch the NAACP speech that, that, that he gave, it's just incredibly theatrical. And that theater is part of what he thinks it is to be African American. And mm -hmm. he's not apologetic, and he doesn't think anyone should be. And, he wants, and I think he's saying to white America, especially mainstream white America, deal with it. Deal with that, and that's what post-race is going to be. Other than that, the messages are very similar. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of this kind of inclusiveness. It's not anti-gay, as some people said, or anti-Jewish, or anti-Muslim. It's a very inclusive message that I saw in his speech, if you watch the whole thing. Solon Simmons, always nice to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much for your time. All right, thanks, Dan.